efficiently use solar energy and why it has huge impacts for our health and well-being. So um, one of the little known facts about buildings is they actually are a huge proportion of our, our energy consumption. They add millions of tons of carbon uh, to the um, environment. And in comparison, actually, to transportation industry, um, uh, manufacturing, buildings is actually a huge consumer of uh, energy um, with a parallel impact on uh, climate change and, and um, increase in pollution and uh, other problems for urban environments. So why can't we use solar energy um, in, in a way to actually cleanly power our buildings? What's so difficult about that when we have such an abundance of solar energy? We have a clue actually from a natural system that is extremely efficient and robust at using solar energy as it's growing. As the, the, the sunflowers are growing, they actually track the sun. They're heliotropic and they're always facing the sun so that they will optimally utilize the solar energy for all of um, uh, their um, intentions and purposes in terms of growing and becoming strong. And you can see these young sunflowers in, in, in the field that are always pointing in the direction of the sun. They also do all of this um, while synergistically working um, with all of the other um, uh, plants and animals and, 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 and flora and fauna in their atmosphere. Um, so we would say that it's a clean, they're participating in a clean ecosystem, but they're producing um, a very efficient processing of energy for rapid growth and, and their own well-being. Now, the, the uh, sunflower tracks the sun, but our buildings are stationary, and that provides the first big problem um, in terms of optimizing our relationship to the sun for harvesting the energy. It also provides a big problem in terms of um, using sun for the basic thing uh, that, that we need it for, which is actually for daylight. Now, um, the, the sunflower responds to the position of the sun according to its circadian rhythm, which means that it has a body clock, just like we have body clocks. And if we actually don't get enough daylight during the day, that completely messes up our body clock. Um, now, we can see a big problem in New York City. Um, we're using all the energy in New York City at the same time, um, with electric lighting at the same time as we have a lot of daylight. Why is this? Well, we can see it actually from the building that we're in, and we can see it from these examples. At a certain point, when we developed electricity, we introduced building codes that allowed us to actually build very, very deep floor pipe buildings, like this big school that we're in right now, and like these images. And it meant that you could actually light a space electronically and not with daylighting. Now, back then, they didn't have the kind of data that we have now. And the emerging data is quite frightening, actually. Um, we find out that if we have a, de uh, uh, a deprivation of daylight, it affects everything in our circadian rhythms or our body clock. It affects our hormone levels, which then affect all of um, uh, the indications for health and well-being, our moods, um, the slow problems like autoimmunity, uh, allergies, cancer, other things that could be affected greatly by a shift in hormone level or in sleeping patterns that are greatly affected by the deprivation of daylight. And of course, this happens over time. If you look at this image, you can see a lot of office workers that basically are spending their days, especially in the winter months, in what we call circadian darkness over the course of many months. Now, since we don't seem to care too much about daylight in the interior of our buildings during the day, we've also thrown really inefficient technologies on the outside that are extremely expensive due to their inefficiencies. Unlike the sunflower, they don't use the solar energy for all of the things that they need to do. So what can we propose? Even if we have another big problem with the solar energy is it's that it's unpredictable, right? We sometimes don't have it either, so it comes and goes. Even if we have a lot of daylight coming in, though, we still have a struggle in using the daylight efficiently. Um, it's coming in, such as in this image, with too much glare often and too much heat, and often what we'll do is we'll pull the blinds, especially if we're working on a computer in that space. Now, what can we do if we have, we're, we're trying basically to insulate ourselves um, from the sun, from other types of weather patterns with all sorts of um, fossil fuel-based energies, sorry, fossil fuel-based energies that are here um, that are basically producing a lot of carbon in the atmosphere, a lot of pollution which also affects our, the, the quality of our air in, indoor and outdoor um, in our buildings. Well, we have a proposition. This is actually a, um, a building that's proposed for the Fashion Institute of Technology just down the road from us here, a few blocks north. Um, and you can see here, this is um, on the right-hand side, this is as if we're taking a slice right through the building. This is a building section. And you can see this is a, a computational analysis showing the solar rays going through. And you can see that the only part of this building that's in the sun is facing due south here, right at the top. They've just got a, 
a few windows, you can see them up here. And this space down here, in this computational analysis, is actually showing this winter garden space where they want to have basically a natural daylight space with a lot of large trees and basically create a kind of winter garden for the students. Um, now that poses a big problem because, as we saw before, we have to intercept those direct solar rays, take out the heat and glare, and allow for that cool, diffuse daylight to flood into that space. Otherwise, we're going to have a big problem for the space. It'll become too hot and we won't be able to look out the windows. So, we propose a system that has um, energy harvesting. We have electrical, thermal energy that we take off the system, and then we do all these other things that we need to do. We light the space and um, we provide a lot of usable daylight. And we do this um, through inserting modules into windows where we're basically also, just like the sunflower, we're tracking the sun. So this is showing a picture of the, of, of the, um, the modules facing west at the end of the day. Um, and it tracks the sun during the day. And importantly, what it does is it absorbs the, the solar energy just like the, solar, uh, the sunflowers. It concentrates that form of energy into these modules and then it takes it off as usable energy that we then distribute just like a kind of um, um, uh, circulation um, uh, system uh, through the building. So we redistribute that heat energy or if we don't need heat, we redistribute it into cooling. Mostly importantly, we take that daylight off of the window and we redistribute that light throughout the building as well. So it's not just the people who get an office right beside the window that get to participate in daylight. And we would say that in the future, uh, just like awareness of how food affects um, health and well-being, we would say that in a democratic society, all people will have access to healthy daylight in their environments.